applied jobs, for well, thirty times got rejected. I went for a police. They said, "No, you're not good." I went to even the、uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, twenty twenty four people went for the job. Twenty three people accepted. I was the only one guy. Many more ways to fail than to succeed. I mean, particularly like for a rocket, there's like a thousand ways a thing can fail, and like one way it can work. If you try hard and it doesn't work out,、uh, that's okay. Like you can、um, learn from that and you know, do another company, and it's not a big deal. J.K. Rowling got rejected 12 times before she finally wrote and published Harry Potter. Even Beyonce had to make hundreds of songs to get Halo. The greatest successes come from having the freedom to fail. Hey, man, you know what's posh? I just feel good today. You always have to feel good. I mean, why why waste your life in sadness when you can enjoy a life of happiness? Man, you a singer, a songwriter, a rapper? I want to inspire the world. I can't just sit there and mourn at my fractures and my disability and be like, "Oh man, see those dudes? They're doing so good." I was never like that. Come on, man. I ain't never been like that. Never ever. Being different and being bullied in school, I could have given up. But with any journey, there's bound to be struggle, and if we don't at least try, we'll never know how much we really can do. When they say jump, you say move out of the way. When they say run, you'll already be gone. And when they say you can't, just smile because you know you can. Before April 1954, universal belief that man was not physically capable of breaking the four-minute barrier that he could not run a mile. In less than four minutes. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along, and he broke the four-minute barrier. Now, here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. What changed? They knew it had been done, and because they knew it had been done. There was a new belief, and they did it. The nice thing that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. It's possible, and that if someone can make their dream become a reality, that it's it's possible that you can make your dream become reality. A gangster was coming to my house to kill me. He was sitting in front of my house, and he put a gun on his dashboard. And my father went out to talk to him. I'm at the door and I'm looking through the mail slot. My father walks down to the car. He says, "Can I help you?" And the dude says, "Tell that motherfucker to come out here." And my father said, "Well, if the motherfucker you're talking about is Will, he's in the house. But if you kill Will, you're gonna have to kill us all. We ain't accepting no threats from you." And he turned his back and walked in the house. And the dude just stormed off. What penetrated me in that moment was there's nothing worse. Then walking around scared. It was a powerful lesson about the complete rejection of fear. My habits, the difference between myself and most of you in this audience, myself and most of the people in all the audiences, Steve Jobs and most of the people in the audiences, Elon Musk and most of the people, is they have extraordinary work habits. So here's a story. Ten years ago,、uh, after long hours, one of the nights. I was walking down that, those stairs, and I saw Dan's office door was open. I kind of peek inside because I've never seen his office, and I could see him working behind the computer. Now this is remember this is after teaching for multiple days, from like 9 a.m. to like 6 p.m. or something like that. Okay,、It、was working. So, so I'm typing away in the computer, and I was just I don't know why I asked the question, but I did. And I said, Oh, so Dan, you're still You're still working late at night, right? It was now. It's like 10 p.m. He looked up. He said, "Well, all you guys are all filthy, stinking rich. I gotta make a living to support this place." And they said, "Get out," and went back to work. The the work ethics that I saw when Dan said, "You have no idea 
what high performance is. You think you're working hard, you're not working hard. You have no idea, right? At, at his age, still going hard for so many hours every day when he doesn't need the money, when I don't need the money, right? We work hard. Right? Most people think, I, I work hard. You're not working, I'm not working shit, right? On nine to five, and, you know, weekends of all that shit. It's not what we're talking about. And I'm not just talking about doing manual labor where you're working hard physically. I'm talking about mental work where you're using your brain, you're working smart, you're doing what is necessary, you're doing the hard stuff. If you're closing, you're picking up the phone, closing those sales, right? In business, you're meeting those prospects and talking to them. Marketing, you're writing those ads, you're getting it up there, you're getting traffic, you're converting those sales, you're developing products, you're doing something, right? That's hard work. Not just manual labor, but this kind of work. So, I wanna share that story with you. Whatever you're working, whatever you're working on, you know you could do more, demand more from yourself. There's so much more potential, so much more you can squeeze out of your performance. And when you get to this level of performance, when you think this is all you got, you've got more, you've got more. You tried to close on our first transaction. That gives you a big fucking no, but. Thanks for taking my question. Sure, man. Uh, um, I started a company called Red Monkey Foods. We do gourmet seasonings and spices. So since I am a complete stranger, would you mind uh, tweeting about it to your 900,000 friends? Good hustle. I'm obsessed with hustle, right? But see, what I find interesting is, even though I just gave a really passionate talk, you went for the 19-year-old dude move, right? You tried to close on our first transaction. That gives you a big fucking no, but I do love your swag and your hustle, and that's why you're sitting in the room. What would have been more interesting is when I talked about you know, the steak I was having for you to like send and say, hey, I saw you Inc. 500, and I'm sending you a little you know, spice that would go really great with that, and then I would say, ah, good thank you economy tactic, let me retweet it. But now you fucking blew it, but there's a lot of other, <laughs> but there's a lot of other pretty girls out there, so the next time you go into the social media bar, don't be a douchebag, roll deep. Thank you. Albert Einstein said that imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. That's what your imagination is. Your imagination is actually very, very real. Everything you imagine could be a preview to life's coming attraction. Everything we have today came from somebody's imagination. Somebody was talking on the phone with that cord on the wall and got sick of it and said, you know what, man, if I could just go outside and talk on the phone, ta-da, we got cell phones. <laughs> Somebody got tired of driving across the country and said, man, if I could fly over there, boom, we got airplanes. It is impossible for you to think an impossible thought. That is impossible. You can't think something that ain't possible. You ain't that smart. <laughs> Imagination is everything. It's a preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you've ever imagined is real. Life is not really long. Let's say the average person 30 years old. So you add up all your traveling, add up all your sleeping, add up all your school, add up all your entertainment, you've probably been half your life doing nothing. So what am I, I'll, I'm 35 years old. 30 more years, I'll be 65. We don't have no more influence. We can't do nothing much at 65. Your wife will tell you that. So what I'm saying, when you're 65, when you're 65, ain't too much more to do. In those 30 years, I have to sleep nine years. I don't have 30 years of daylight. I have to travel back to America, take six, seven miles. All my traveling, probably four years of traveling in the next 30 years, about nine years of sleeping, television, movies, entertainment, about three years of entertainment. Out of 30 years, I might have about 16 years to be productive. 